Hello and welcome to this video. So we're going to start the process now of writing a script that can collect us a lot of historical data. The Uando API is pretty good at giving us a lot of data, so we get 5,000 candles per call. But if you want to go three or four years back in five minute candles, you're going to need a lot more than 5,000. To start off, I'm in utils.py here, which you'll remember hopefully from way back at the beginning of the course. And I want to write a couple of functions in here that are going to serve us throughout the rest of the course quite well, in my experience. At the top of the file here, I'm going to import two libraries that you've seen before. One of them is date time and one of them is date util parser. This one you know already from reading in strings when we're converting strings into date times. And this one you know already as well, the date time library. And I'd like to put two small functions into the utils here. One is to actually get the current UTC time. So I'm going to call this def and then time underscore UTC. And we're going to write return dt.datetime.utcnow.replace tzinfo equals dt.timezone.utc. So what we're doing here might look a little bit odd. We're asking the date time to give us the UTC now, but then we're replacing its time zone with the UTC and then returning that. So what exactly is going on? And we can have a little look down in the main here. I'm just going to comment out the two prints that we had in here from before. And let's just do a little experiment. We'll print dt.datetime.utc now. And then under that, we'll print our new time UTC. So if I run that script in the console, what you can see is that the first date we print, which is the one that was created from dc.datetime.utc now, it's giving the UTC time, which is an hour behind the time I'm recording and I'm in Germany, so I can confirm that's correct. But there isn't a time zone on there. And as we know from the Oander API, the times come back with the time zone on them. So what we need to do is modify this date time and put the time zone on. So we've got the plus zero zero zero, which allows us to do date time comparisons with data frames later on when we're collecting the data. Likewise, we're going to write another little utility function here called def get UTC DT from string in brackets date string. And what we're going to do here is allow us to take in a time string that doesn't have a time zone on, so no plus zero zero or something, read that in as a date, and then return it with the UTC time info. So I'm going to say D is equal to pass date string, and then we're going to return D dot replace TZ info and time zone UTC. So we use the, the date util parser to read in our date string, which is very good at, and then we'll put a time zone on there, which is the UTC time zone. So to test that quickly, we can do something like print get UTC DT from string and just give it some kind of string without a time zone. Run in the console and you can see now we've got another date with the time zone added on. Okay, now we've written those. What I want to do is go over to the Oanda API.py. And inside here, we've got the fetch candles method, which is missing a few details that we now need. And I want to make some changes. So for the count, we're going to set the default count as equal to none. That means we'll have to, when we're using this, specify the count if we want to use the count. We're going to make a default value for the granularity of one hour granularity. So if we don't specify the granularity in the function, it'll always be one hour candles. Then we're going to make two new parameters. One is date from is equal to none and date to is equal to none. Then in our parameters dictionary, we're going to remove the count from here. So the way we're going to handle this function is we're going to say either we've been supplied a count or we've been supplied a date from or date to, but we can't use both of them together. And if none of them are supplied, we'll just default to a count of 300. The other thing is how we give Oanda our date from and our date to. In the Oanda documentation, from and to are the keys that we need to specify or the parameters we need to specify. And if you dig in, you'll find there are various formats that you can use. In our case, we're going to be using something called the timestamp. If I just go to the Python documentation, we can see that date time has a timestamp function on it. And that returns a float, it says here, which represents the timestamp of the date time instance, which is usually the total seconds elapsed since 1st of the 1st, 1970. Now, the Oanda API only accepts integers as the timestamp and not float. So we're going to need to convert those. So what we're going to say then is that if date from and date to are both not none, so we definitely want to go from a date and to a date, then we're going to set in our parameters the key to and the key from as the date to timestamp converted to an integer and the from likewise. Otherwise, if those both are none, then maybe we've set the count, in which case we'll set the count is equal to count. Otherwise, if we haven't done any of this, then we'll default and set the count value to 300. And now we can continue as we did before, sending our request. 
and getting the answer. So the last thing I'd like to do is then just test this down in the main here. So I'm going to comment out this save instruments because we don't need this. And here we're going to make use of the new function that we've written inside utils. So we've written this get utc uh, dt from string. I'm just going to copy that because we're going to be using it. And we can say that our date from is equal to utils.get and then we'll put in and then let's, I don't know, let's do 2019 uh, May and do May the 5th. I've no idea what this is, 1800. And then we can make our date to, let's say 2019 and we'll go up to May the 10th, uh, 1800 as well. And then we can print fetching the candles of the euro dollar from that date. So let's have a quick check that this actually works. So in my console it seems to have worked and I note that the last candle we get is not including the time we search to, so that's worth noting for the future and it's 1700 UTC. One important thing to remember here about the API is that we still are limited, I think, to the 5,000 candles. So you can't say we're going to search from 2003 up to 2019 because it'll cut you off somewhere along the way. We're still limited by the max 5,000 candles per call, irrespective of what date from and date two we put. So we need to bear this in mind. And this is why we're going to need to write some kind of script to build up a library of archive data for us to use in our simulations. But we have this utility working and we have the Oendo API able to fetch candles between dates. We can now start writing our script to collect a bit more data. So thanks very much for watching. Questions, comments is welcome always on YouTube.